My name is Mike James, and I'm the Southbridge Republican Town Committee Chairman. The Southbridge Republican Town Committee and the Democratic South Southbridge Democratic Town Committee has uh, worked cooperatively to bring you this debate. This is not the first time that our two committees have worked uh, for the common goal here. And each time we do, we build our respect and trust with each other. The reason that we do these debates, though, is so that the, the voters can be better informed about the candidates of who they are and where they stand on the issues that are important to you. The effort, though, doesn't just come from our two committees. It comes from the fine folks at Cable Access. It comes from our guest moderator, Larry McDonald, a face that's familiar to most. The candidates who are willing to participate in the, in the event. And most importantly, you, the, the audience, the people that are here to, in, to, to become more informed, to understand what the issues are and who the candidates are before you vote. And for that, I thank you. I would like to introduce to you Jack Jovan. He is the vice chair of the, the Southbridge Democratic Town Committee. Thank you, Mr. Jean. Well, it's a pleasure to be here tonight uh, on behalf of the uh, men and women of the Southbridge Democratic Town Committee. I'd like to welcome you, the candidates, to this forum uh, to introduce yourself to the voters of Southbridge. This will probably be one of the only opportunities that you as candidates uh, will put, put yourself forward to our voters. Important election year, a lot of changes going on in the town. Uh, look forward to hearing your answers to the questions that we pose to you. I'd like to thank the Republican Committee for having us uh, partner up with you on this matter. And I'd like to thank you candidates for putting yourself forward. Uh, with that, I'm gonna introduce our moderator for the evening. Our moderator is a no stranger to the town of Southbridge, long time uh, born and raised here in Southbridge, Massachusetts, comes from a long line of uh, political leadership in town. He himself has served on the Southbridge Town uh, Council, uh, currently a, a long service of uh, public service, uh, both in the United States Air Force and the town of Southbridge, and a uh, good friend of mine and good friend of the town, Larry Butch McDonald, I welcome you. Uh, Butch, I just want to say, too, great job on Memorial Day Parade. It's a fine tradition that you're carrying on uh, in your father's legacy. So with that, I will introduce uh, Butch McDonald. We look forward to a lively debate, and uh, thank you. Chairman Mike Jaynes and Vice Chairman Jack Jovian, thank you very much, and thank you, Jack, for that very kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, candidates, it's a pleasure to be here before you. I'm very grateful to, uh, and honored and flattered to have been asked to form and serve, uh, perform and serve as your moderator this evening. Mike told me to remember to put this out. I almost forgot. <laughs> uh, so I'll start off by going over the, the rules of the debate for this evening. I'd like to thank uh, the Southbridge Republican and Democratic Town Committees for hosting this event. I think it's an important event and glad to be back participating in it and also cable access. Our elections on June 24th, and the people of Southbridge will have an opportunity to select who they want as their leaders in the school committee, town council, and various other offices. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to moderate, and I want to make sure that the candidates and the voters who are watching at home understand the rules of the debate and the candidates' positions on, their, on the issues at hand. So the candidates for school committee are before us. They've been seated in a random order. Uh, they have also been selected in random order to answer the questions in a particular order. Each candidate will have two minutes in an introductory remarks to, uh, as an opening statement. Then we'll have th uh, two rounds of five questions. If there's time remaining, we may go into a, a third round. The questions have been written by the host Republican and Democratic town committees, and the candidates have not been told what the questions are in advance. In fact, neither has the moderator. <laughs> The questions are in sealed envelopes, and a random one will be drawn for each question in a round. Each question will have a primary responder, again selected at random, uh, starting off, I believe, with Dr. Raymond Page, uh, to answer the first round with two minutes to, respond, uh, to answer the question. After that, each other candidate will have one minute to give their follow-up responses to that question, and it'll go down the line. Each candidate will have a chance to answer a question for two minutes and respond with one. 
If a candidate references another candidate during the discussion, the moderator may, at their discretion, allow the candidate name to follow up to any, any question or anything that's been introduced by another candidate. We'll have as many rounds of questions as time allows, and again, candidates at the end will be given three minutes to give a closing statement. So if we're ready to begin, I'll start with round one and the first question. <coughs> Statements. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> I just said that, didn't I? Thank you, Mr. Chinisky. <laughs> so we'll start with the uh, opening would be Dr. Raymond Page. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, and I'm, I'm very uh, uh, pleased to be here as a candidate for the Southbridge uh, School Committee. Um, by way of an introduction, I realize a lot of people probably don't know me. I'm Ray Page. I live on uh, High Street. I've lived in Southbridge since the year 2000. Um, I believe that a school, the reason I'm running for school committee is I believe that a school system and a quality education in that school <coughs> system is the strongest asset that any community can have. Um, I work in education and I'm very passionate about education um, and I understand its importance in a person's life. Um, to me, a good education is something that can never ever be taken away from you, like a house, a job, a car, or anything else. If you have a solid education, you always have op opportunities and, and doors will be open for you. And so it's incredibly important that we provide that for all of the students in this community. Um, I'm a, as I said, I'm a member of this community and, and I'm putting my uh, uh, name out there because uh, I wish to do my part and hopefully add what I think will be a fresh and open-minded perspective to some of the challenges facing our education system at this point. Um, I don't want to really brag too much, but um, one of the things that I know, and the reason I want to say this, is I've had two stepdaughters that have all gone through the, both have gone through the Southbridge school system, and both of them have graduated at the top of their class. And so one of the things that I know is that it's possible to get a world-class education in Southbridge. And these girls are, are, one has gone on to medical school, University of Wisconsin first, and the second one is going to University of California at Berkeley, which is a top 10 school in the nation. So it's possible for us to get a really, really good education for our kids in the school system. The problem is, I don't think all of this is available or it, taken advantage of by all students, and I want to see what I can do to help put that into perspective and see what we can do to improve outcomes for everybody. Um, is the light coming on? I have, what, one minute left, or what is Five that? Five seconds. Five seconds. Okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it with that. Um, and, um, and, and, okay. Okay, Mr. Brent Abramson for your opening remarks, please. Two minutes. Thank you, first of all, to all who are involved in making this debate happen. Quickly, let me state, my name is Brent Abrahamson, and I'm a lifelong resident of Southbridge. I graduated from Southbridge High, earned my bachelor's degree in arts and English, and my master's degree in education from Worcester State College, and I'm now retired after a 31-year career as a public school teacher. I'm a candidate for the Southbridge Public Schools, for the Southbridge School Committee, rather, because I believe that we're a critical moment in our schools, and the choices we make will affect the schools and ultimately the children of Southbridge, for better or worse, for years to come. There are some people who believe that all of our challenges will be solved if we can only return to the days when reading, writing, and arithmetic were taught to the tune of a hickory stick. Well, our industries and colleges are telling us that our children need much more than simple basics to be successful as they enter today's job market. And we have gained more knowledge about the social, emotional, and cognitive development of children that we can throw out the hickory stick. You know, bullying does work at times. And I believe that one of my opponents, Mr. Lazo, engaged in that when he previously, previously sat on the school committee. From a position on the school committee, you can bully superintendents and other administrators. You can bully teachers and other members of the school committee to get your way. You can berate individuals in the press. But no amount of huffing and puffing is going to topple the Massachusetts Board of Education. Southbridge's 10-year status as an underperforming district should be proof enough of that. We have made some important steps as a school district in setting a course that ensures that each and every child has what he or she needs for future fulfillment and success. I hope we can, can continue in that direction. Thank you. Mr. Lazo. 
the opening remarks? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to thank the Republican and Democratic Town Committee for this public service tonight. It's something that the, uh, the citizens of Southbridge and taxpayers deserve to see. And I think you're doing a fine job with it. It's always nice to see Republicans and Democrats get along in the town of Southbridge. My name is Scott Lazo. I am seeking a term on the Southbridge School Committee for many reasons. One of the biggest reasons is to provide experience and knowledgeable history of where we were, where we are, and where we're headed. You're not going to hear any personal attacks from me on anybody or fictitious bullying or anything like that. We have enough of that in Southbridge politics. I have to rise above this because the truth, the facts, the experience. I'm in the boardroom over the years through the building committee, and I know that we studied a building for 10 years on how to use it, why it was designed the way it is, and we don't have a lot of experience. We have good school committee members that work hard. But I think when you have a school committee with the longest term, uh, a year and three quarters, uh, it's short on experience, it's short on history. So I'm not going to play the blame game. I will not, as a committee member, step into the, uh, into the mud slinging as we've already started here tonight. So I think what we have to do is focus on kids, employees, the pride of Southbridge, the red and the white. That's what I stand for. Yes, I will fight on the four fight for the citizens of Southbridge, and especially the underprivileged kids that need the education to further themselves and to get them out of some tough situations, neighborhoods, and families. So I think what we have to do here is more or less work together. It's a, it's a great concept. We've had great uh, team concept in Southbridge and in spirits. It's time to bring the team concept back, stay positive, and if I may quote Ms. Burrito, stay positive was her quote the student rep before she left the school committee. And I'm going to take her advice and I'm going to stay positive. Thank you. Okay. Our next candidate, Leanne Pate, your two minute opening. Good evening. I'm Leanne Pate. And as many of you may remember, I ran back in 2012 and just recently in 2013 for a seat on the school committee. And I was uns unsuccessful in both attempts. I have remained committed. <clears throat> to helping the children and the parents of our school district. To me, commitment is not a word, it's a way of life for me. And I continue to attend every school committee meeting. I have attended several different subcommittee meetings for the school committee, and I stay active in the district and in the community. I currently sit on the Commission on Disabilities. I'm a secretary, the recording secretary for them. I am a citizen member on the education and Human Services Committee. I'm also the chair of the Southridge SPED PAC, which is a special needs committee that the school district is mandated to have. Um, I'm a parent member of the Charlton Street School Council, and I had the pleasure of sitting on the principal search committee for Eastford Road. And, and, and in my opinion, it, we put a lot of hard work in selecting the correct people to put forward. I'm also a member of the PTA. Some may say I'm an advocate for the special needs students only. My response will be, yes, I am an advocate for the special needs. I'm personally affected by it. And they hold a special place in my heart, and there'll be no denying it. But that does not mean I care less for any other child in our school district no matter who they are. I care about all these kids. I cared about my niece who graduated on the Honor Society, and she's attending a three-year accelerated nursing program currently at Mass College of Pharmacy. Who will, she'll be done next year. Um, I believe every ch child okay, in I'm this sorry, district. Sorry, your time's up. Thank you. And joining us now also is candidate Christopher Olivo. Your two-minute opening, sir. Good evening. Thank you all who are in attendance. My name is Christopher Olivo. I've been a resident of Southbridge since 2006. I was appointed to the school committee of the town of Southbridge in December and uh, have enjoyed my run um, with the school committee thus far. I am grateful to have been selected. I have Four children in the school district. I have one who has graduated and is away at college at Brigham Young University, 
who's attending there as a mechanical engineer. The education of these students is what is important to me, is the reason that I ran in the beginning and is the reason that I am seeking election now. I've seen, I've been around the world in, in my career as a soldier in the United States military. I've seen what society is without education and I've seen what society can be with education. I sit, currently sit on the Eastford Road School Council. I am also a member of the PTA and I do so starting at the Eastford Road School and on the PTA. I serve in those capacities because I think that if we start to build a foundation with where these students are in the beginning, then we will avoid the difficulties that we have in their latter part of their education. I know that the students of this town, the students of the middle high school and the, element and the elementary schools are very talented students. And they are students who just need direction and guidance. And for this, I seek your election. Thank you. Okay. Just uh, want to also point out, we keeping time for us tonight is Mr. Bob Chinisky from the Republican Town Committee and Mr. Kevin Cristo also from the Republican Town Committee. And just to explain how the light system works is, generally speaking, you have the green light once you're once I've finished asking the question and the time starts and the yellow light will come on at 15 seconds, you'll have 15 seconds remaining and then the red light means your time has expired. So now that we've had everybody's opening remarks, we'll go to the first question. We'll again start um, over here with Dr. Raymond Page. Characterize the atmosphere on the current school committee. How would your presence on the committee make it different? Um, <clears throat> I, I think that if you talk to almost anybody that knows me, I'm the kind of person that usually sits back and listens to issues, listens to arguments. Um, I, I'd like to listen to all sides of arguments. I'd like to look at things from um, perspectives that are different than the one that I may be coming in with even. I'm always willing to listen, I'm always willing to, to uh, respect the opinions and in some cases differences of opinions of others. Um, and so what, what seems to me is there's a little bit of, um, uh, I don't want to get too negative here, but there, there, there's, there's a lot of sort of nitpicking and things like that going on in the current, in the current system. Um, and I don't think that those kinds of things are really positive for our students. And that, it's really the thing at the end of the day is the school committee is really an advisory board. And it's a board that should be listening to the administration, taking the data from the administration, using that in whatever they can, in whatever perspective they can, and helping the administration in making the right decisions that's going to impact our students the most favorably. And so that, that's really the environment that I want to bring. Um, and any, any uh, perspective that I might have in terms of my experiences with education, I want to bring to that discussion. I want to bring those, those experiences to the table. <clears throat> I probably have a lot of opinions on how I think things uh, could be done in, uh, in a classroom, in a school, because I've had some experience um, in Southbridge High School back in 2006. I was a, a sort of a part-time, well, it's full-time, but I was in between projects, and so I had an opportunity to work in the school, and I saw some of the challenges that our teachers face. And so I'd like to sort of sit on the other side of it and act as an advocate, if I can, in helping provide the, the resources that are needed to help our students. Thank you. Okay, as the primary responder, Dr. Page had two minutes. The remaining candidates will have one minute to follow up on this question. I'll repeat the question again before uh, we start the time. Uh, for Mr. Abrahams Abrahamson, characterize the atmosphere on the current school committee. How would your presence on the committee make it different? I think we have a very strong school committee, uh, more united now than they have been in quite some time. They are they want to move forward uh, in a positive way. They have been uh, responsive to the needs of the students, I believe. I do think that the school committee needs to um, be more um, supportive of the uh, efforts of, of teachers. They need to um, know 
what they're asking administrators to do, and they need to ensure that the administrators know how to transfer that knowledge to the uh, teachers. But I do think that compared to previous school committees, which were almost hostile, okay. this is a good one. I'm sorry, your time's up. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lazo? First of all, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm going to remember that I did serve in government, and, and uh, passing judgment on a, a committee uh, is always wonderful to throw a stone at somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in that. I think, uh, I think every school committee member runs with the intent to work hard and do a good job. And I think everybody enters office, eyes open, ears open, and works hard. Um, I, I commend uh, Mr. Olivo. If he was the only guy running right now, I wouldn't be running for this office because I would be supporting him. Uh, one of the things that I, that I will bring to the committee is process and procedure. You will not have school committee members in classrooms evaluating teachers. I think that's wrong. I think administrators should be allowed to do their job, whether it be a curriculum coordinator or a high school principal or an athletic director. I think what our job is is explicit by Ed Reform. <laughs> it is policy and budget. And if we as a committee, what I'll bring is a team concept. I can work with any one of those members. Will I agree with all the members? Right. I'm sorry, not, your time's up. But we'll have healthy debate. Right. Ms. Pate, uh, characterize the atmosphere on the current school committee, and how would your presence on the committee make it different? I believe the current school committee, every person sitting up there, including the gentleman to my right, have all gone into, into this with their hearts in the right place to help these children in this district, including the gentleman to my left. Everybody goes in with good intentions to help the kids, and I believe that's what they're doing. I would like to be part of that process and help them continue it. That does not mean if I disagree with something, I will blindly say yes and agree with them. If I do not agree with what something they're doing, I'll answer honest and say no, and, and that's how I will vote. I can't just blindly follow people if I don't have that in my heart to, to agree with them. Okay. Thank you. And you want me to read the question again, Mr. I Reed? got the question, thank you. Okay. I think the current atmosphere on, in, in the school committee right now is one that is very busy. It's one that has been very busy since uh, I, came on to, I came into the position, position in December. Um, we're constantly working to better uh, improve the school district and uh, to make sure that the proper administration is in place for these students. Um, how can I improve? I can improve by uh, continuing to be the voice that uh, of reason. I am one who likes to see things from a dis different perspective. Um, I think things can be handled tactfully and respectfully, and I uh, don't think that there is a need to uh, degrade anybody or, or bash anybody. I think moving forward, we will be very successful if we can accomplish these things. Thank you. We'll move on to question number two. Again, the primary responder will have two minutes, and the follow-ups will be one minute. And the primary responder for this question is Mr. Abrahamson. Do you think the school department budget is too large, just right, or not large enough? And what specific areas might you hope to change in that regard? <clears throat> First of all, I believe that the citizens of Southbridge, all of them, want to support the schools. Obviously, we can always use more money, but that's not the times that we live in. What they do want, <coughs> what the town wants, is honesty in how the money is being spent and what it's, why it's needed. Also, it's prioritizing, and I'll give you an example. I often walk around town, and a few years ago, I stood at the end of Cole Avenue, facing up, on, I was on Dresser Street. To my right was a property controlled by the school, and to my left, a property controlled by the school. On the right was a finely manicured field, McMahon Field, with plaques 
and bleachers. On my left was the school, which was being used at that time, with a danger of part of it falling down a cliff and landing on Marcy Street. What, in these two uh, scenarios, which one is the correct priority? The shrine to Southbridge football? Or the, the schoolhouse? Enter, you know, the house that Southbridge built. Enter at your own risk. Where do we have the most <coughs> chance to affect, we say kids first, we say kids first striving for excellence. Where can when the most kids strive for excellence? What's the priority? The football field or the classroom? Mr. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, sir. Do you think the school department budget is too large, just right, or large, not, not large enough? In what specific areas might you hope to change? What I think we have to do is basically prioritize through policy. Um, the most important thing, the priority is the classroom and the teacher, not the top heavy management of the front office. What we need to do is there's been a lot of hiring and a lot of assistance and a lot of positions that I would have to review that were not there when I was on school committee. We ran leaner and um, everything is important when it comes to kids. Athletics is very important for some of the kids. It actually keeps kids off the street and in the classroom. We've proven that in Southbridge. And as far as McMahon Field, you got to do your homework on that one. Tons of things in McMahon Field, like the Hall of Fame and the lights, were all donated. I give Mike Como great pleasure in manicuring the field. He does a great job with his maintenance budget. Very small budget, great job. But the classroom is the most important thing that we have to worry about. And everything else is built around that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pate, would you like the question again? No, I, I understand the question. In fact, I sat on the EHS when that budget was going through for the vote. And it was worked out between the superintendent and the town manager, and agreements were made, and the budget is just right for our district right now. We're going to see some improvements and a classroom for medical, medically fragile children be established so those children are safe. The superintendent has plans on equipping sixth graders with iPads to teach them the technology so that everything can be done via the iPads, which would be a great process to see if we can, we can get that to come to fruition. Um, everything that I know that the district wanted to have happen, it was ironed out in that EHS meeting. You know, it, it may not be perfect for some, but the district is happy with that budget, and, and they can live with it, and I, I'll agree with it. Mr. Olivo? I think that the current budget that we have is a budget that has been made to fit our school district. I think that every measure was taken in, in, uh, in order to be able to facilitate the cuts that were demanded by the town. <coughs> Could we always use more money? Absolutely. But what we have done as a school, school committee is prioritize and see where the priorities are. Um, and that is the education of the students and, and moving forward. Uh, transportation is a big piece. A lot of things have been put in place and the meetings are public. And I welcome you to come out to those meetings so that you may understand where the cuts have been made and where the money is going. Thank you. We move on to the next question. Do I get a chance to respond to that? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Payne. <laughs> Okay, so the, the, the issue is whether the budget's right. Um, I'll, I'll be honest that I don't know the, the exact answer to that, whether it's just right, too big, or too little. One of the things I do know that from the data that's supplied by the state on their website is that our per pupil expenditures per student or per pupil expenditures in the town of Southbridge 
are just about exactly in line with state averages in just about every single category. And so I don't think we're spending too much money and I don't think we're spending too little money on a per student basis. The thing is, is if you compare our academic achievement results across the board with the state averages, we are failing miserably, starting from third grade. There's data that you'll see that 35% of students at third grade are not reading at reading level in Southbridge. All right, that's a big problem because that's propagating all the way through the system. And uh, th I think it's not about spending more money, it's about maybe reallocating or thinking about how we're, how we're delivering the education. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Now we'll go to the next question. Uh, with the two-minute primary response will be Mr. Lazo. What goals would you emphasize for the new superintendent? I think when you set goals and objectives, you have to sit together in a room as we have in the past with Superintendent Hanley and superintendents in the past, where the goals and objectives uh, are studied through progress of what actually happens in a classroom. Uh, as the previous speaker has said, we're, we're failing miserably in certain areas, and this is what we have to work on. Um, those goals and objectives are put out by the committee together with the superintendent. You don't hang the superintendent out there and just order the superintendent, oh, this is what we want. That's not the way I would see it happening. I would suggest getting in a room with a team concept, getting the feedback from the leadership of the buildings on what the problems are, the needs, as you do during budget session, and take it and mold it, and mold it where we have benchmarks, measurable benchmarks, where we know we're accomplishing these things. I remember when we had a level four high school, we brought it all the way to level one. It was a level one high school when I left office. And so there was still tons of work to do. And the most frustrating thing is, and I saw the school committee getting as frustrated as I was when I was on school committee, the minute Boston gives you the question and you work very hard to get the answer, they change the question. And it might change the question in a three year time period and there are new members on. But I sat there and I shared that frustration that Boston is, is, is almost an obstructionist of coming out of underperforming. And they cannot tell you when you can do it and how you can do it. But in the early days, they said, once you build your high school, that's the last thing you have to do before you come out of underperforming. We built a new high school and all of a sudden I'm looking at the school committee asking the same questions that I was asking five years ago. So I think what we have to do is goals and objectives collectively, collectively with benchmarks where you know you're accomplishing it and identifying the problems to correct any weaknesses that we have. Thank you. Ms. Pate? The goals, uh, I would have to agree with the gentleman to my left. You, you need to look at it collectively as, as a group in whole. But most certainly, I would hold a superintendent accountable for, you know, seeing that the MCAS scores and tests are improving with our children, and see that these buildings are run properly, and that our children are safe inside these buildings, that our children are learning inside these buildings. I. I I believe they're accountable for that, and, and they need to justify where the money's being spent. We can't have money being spent in one area and another area is going to suffer. <coughs> it needs to be equally spent to help these groups. We have multiple groups that need help, and every accommodation needs to be taken. Mr. Levo? <coughs> My goals for the superintendent, if you have watched or listened to the last school committee meeting, I stated my goals for the superintendent. I believe that as a superintendent, the superintendent needs to be visible in the community, in the schools. I think that the superintendent needs to gain the respect of this community that she will do what she said she's going to do. I believe that she will. I believe that 
as we support her in this, that we can be successful. I believe that she, that the superintendent needs to be the pillar of strength that is going to carry the school district forward. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Page? Yeah, so, so I, I think that, that really with any new uh, manager, the first uh, order of business is to build a sense of stability and a sense of trust in your leadership among the people that you're leading. Um, that, that to me is priority number one and that's the biggest goal. And that's to really work to understand from the inside, from the inside of the classroom, where the problems are. We have these massive educational deficits in our system and it's propagated throughout every grade level and I would like to see a superintendent that comes back to the school committee and tells us what the reality of the problem is with suggestions on how they're going to fix it and I haven't actually seen that in the <coughs> 10 years 12 14 years that I've been here thank you thank you Mr. Abrahamson well the fact is that the rubrics for evaluating superintendents administrators and teachers are all going to be, and they're all required, they're all on the Massachusetts uh, website, they're from the Department of Education. Now, as, in terms of setting goals, we have just hired a superintendent for one year. The school committee needs to sit down with her, discuss with that use of that rubric where the most needs are in Southbridge. We know offhand it's certainly special education and English language learners. That's where we are having the most uh, challenges. But there is no mystery to setting this up and it should be done. Those goals and, and, and the uh, evaluation should be ready by September before the school year even starts. Thank you. Moving to question number four, the primary responder will be Ms. Pate. Why is Southbridge having such a problem with the school's administrative turnover? What needs to change to correct the problem? My feeling on this is there is a high turnover, and I agree 100%, and it, it does need to stop. But you need the right people to do the job. And if a former principal or director is not performing that job, I agree wholeheartedly this person <coughs> excuse me, needs to go. And another person needs to come in that can do this job and do it to their fullest ability with the district's help. I'm hoping with, when the dust settles that the new principals in the, the schools will bring in fresh eyes, fresh ideas, help move our district forward and, and stay on track and, and get our kids where they need to be, get our teachers everything they need to help them get our children educated and assist them in every way possible. Fresh eyes, fresh ideas, it's not a bad thing. I, I know some of these people, some of the principals and other admin and teachers, whatever, it, it's not easy seeing people go. It really isn't, especially if you know them personally or you've built a relationship. But honestly, we need the right people. And if I have to see five people go, and then the sixth person is that right person that has what it takes to do the job, I'd be happy. It, it's a hard process. It's no different than any business in the world. You're hiring for someone, you want the right person, and you're going to let the wrong person go. It, okay, thank you. Mr. Olivo? <coughs> Could you repeat the question, please? Sure. <coughs> Why is Southbridge having such a problem with the school's administrative turnover? What needs to change to correct the problem? I'm not sure that I know exactly what the problem is with the turnover rate. What I do know 
is that as it's been voiced on this school committee by Ms. Burrito and by the students who attend these schools whom I have had discussions with, the constant changing is chaotic and is not sit well in the school district, in the schools itself. Um, it causes the teachers to question whether they're doing the right thing or not. And even in some cases, the teachers are looking for other jobs and not doing their job in teaching our children. <coughs> Moving forward, I think that we need to take the consideration of the committees that are formed and really listen to the candidates that have been selected and um, hire the right person for the job. Thank, Thank you. you. Dr. Yeah, Page? So, um, it seems to me in the last couple of years, we didn't have this much administrative turnover other than starting, I guess, about two, two years ago or so. Um, and it seems to me that a lot of this has occurred um, due to some political reasons for people wanting to get rid of certain individuals and that being accomplished. But then the replacements that were made were, I think, ill-advised in, in, in some instances and in putting people that aren't really well prepared to take on a very, very large difficult position and basically setting them up to fail. I think that's been part of it. Um, so really it comes back to, again, building longevity and trust in, the, in your leadership as a superintendent to be able to recruit and mentor the right types of principals that are going to then take that attitude down into their, into their buildings. And uh, that, that's what I think it's uh, really about. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Abrahamson. Politics, cronyism, and nepotism have uh, characterized the appointment of administrators in this uh, district for many years. We're now turning the corner on that and hiring people who want to be here and who uh, enjoy the challenge. I think that that problem is being solved, and uh, I think that we have good days to look forward as far as that's concerned. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to question number, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lazo. Uh -huh. Could you repeat the question, please? Sure. Why is Southbridge having such a problem with the school's administrative turnover, and what needs to change to correct the problem? <laughs> it's pure and simple. It's called stability. I'm in business. Stability comes from people play, staying in place and working hard. Um, let me give you an example. This community studied a, a middle high school concept for 10 years. I chaired that committee. We had a management structure that was put forth by this community on two separate, as we promised the people, two separate operations, a middle school, which is a different animal than a high school, with centralized services to save the taxpayers' money. This is what we did. Two years ago, Four people took it upon themselves 30 days before we opened this building and changed the management structure to one administrator over a five-acre building. We set that lady up to fail, and she failed miserably. And so will the next one if we do not get to two administrators. We do this to ourselves. Let's stop the blame game, and let's really look at the study, and let's get together on this before, like as the previous speaker said, the dust uh, Settles. Your time's up, the Mr. dust Lyle. isn't settling. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Moving to question five, the last one from this round. With Mr. Olivo as the primary responder. What is the single most important issue facing the town of Southbridge school system today? If you were elected, what would you do regarding that issue? I think that the, I think there are a number of issues. I think that if I had to pick one, it would have to be the way these students are being taught. For many years, and what I have seen and experiencing with my own children in the school district that they have been taught to test. 
I think that the MCAS has become something that is <clears throat> changed the way that teachers teach and that it's not doing these students any justice. I think that if teachers went back to the way that they learned how to teach or even to the older days, to when we were in school, I think that if you're taught the basics, math, reading, writing, science, then all of this, I think that they would do very well in the MCAS. We have the teachers and, and this have changed how they're teaching these kids. And these kids tell us themselves that they're not learning. They're not being challenged in this school. This is primarily in, in, in the middle high school. I think that once these teachers take a step back and really listen to the students, and I'm not saying that it's all the teachers, I'm just saying that we need to stop teaching the test and start teaching these students what is gonna set them up for the future in their education and in life so that they can become great assets to the communities that they will live in. Thank you. Dr. Page. Yep. Okay, so from my, my read of the, the data, again, um, in terms of MCAS results sort of throughout the district, is that I think the biggest issue is that starting very, very early in the elementaries, it seems like we have large populations of students that are not performing at grade level in their respective grades. And that problem is propagated throughout the system. It, you can see little dips and ebbs where it gets better in some cases, but the percentage points aren't nearly coming to where they need to be. So that's a big issue, and I don't know exactly what the reason for that is. Um, and I don't think you can break it out into any individual demographic because the state breaks that out too and it, there, are, there are no firm lines drawn there. One of the things that I've heard a lot about being a major issue in the classrooms is discipline and, and the behavior of students and large populations of students with, with, with poor behavior. And um, I think that that's, those are policy issues that we need to deal with and make sure that you know, if the kids aren't behaving and sitting still and listening and paying attention, they're not going to learn. And so that's... Okay. Thank you. My view. Would you like to question again, Mr. Abramson, or no. are you all set? Uh, I do talk to a lot of people around town, and I go to all the uh, different neighborhoods. And I was talking to one young man who uh, was at Southbridge High School, is at Southbridge High School. He identified himself, self-identified as uh, Puerto Rican, and said, they don't want us here. And I thought, you know, is it the students not getting along? No. It's some of the adults. If only the Latinos weren't there, the schools would do, be doing better. That's the impression that he got. Very smart, intuitive young man. No child or young person should ever be made to feel diminished. But it's a view that's been publicly echoed, in a sense, from former school committee member Mr. Lasso, who once asked why the schools have to cater to what he referred to as the bottom end. I could talk a lot more about right. that. Mr. Lazo, at my discretion, you have the option to answer Thank that. you. Um, first of all, when you talk about it's not bottom end, it's, it's high end learner and the low end learner. When you gauge the student's progress, what, what my discussion was is when they wiped out the AP courses. And that's what triggered the discussion of why are we punishing the high-end learners and we're just going to finance. All these kids are important. Everybody should have an opportunity. If you are a very smart person and, and are well-taught from home and you have great parents that push you up the ladder and you walk into the classroom, behave and do as you're told, and, and all of a sudden you're at the high-end, why do we punish the high-end learner? Tonight we've heard a lot of buzzwords and they seem to be pointed at me and that's okay I'm a big boy but don't ever think that the Hispanic population I am you know when you say high-end learner low-end learner it's not Hispanic we have some also white kids that are not high-end learners I've been coaching football for 16 years the Hispanic population and I are very good together we work together 
we win together. And I think the sooner that we understand that we're all children first, don't start this d debate of what you're saying. No, I think we have to represent all our kids, the high-end learner and also the learner that is struggling at the bottom end of the curve. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Lazo didn't name anything he that would warrant a response. He said your. I, I don't think well, that that could be any uh, clearer. Moving on from Mr. Lazo's one-minute response. Could you repeat the question, sir? I will. What is the single most important issue facing the town of Southbridge school system today? And if you were elected, what would you do regarding that issue? I think what we have to do is change the atmosphere that has been created in the past couple of years in the classroom and in these buildings. Right now, we have an atmosphere of everybody looking over their shoulder, worrying about whether they're going to be fired. Is it my turn today? Is it your turn tomorrow? That has to go. We have to get into the classrooms and create stability. When I talk to a child, I said, how'd you do on your MCAST? I flunked. Why? I had three math teachers this term three math teachers at the high school level. That's the revolving door that we have to stop. We have to stop the revolving door on employees first, and that will automatically help the revolving doors on school choice. It is a very simple equation. You have to make the commitment to your administration and your teachers to do the job and be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pate. Can you please read it? Can you please read it again, sure. please? What is the single most important issue facing the town of Southbridge school system today? And if you were elected, what would you do regarding that issue? I think the most important issue is we're a level four school district and we need to get that off of us in any way, shape or form we can. And I would see that the administration and the, the schools started focusing on correcting these areas, the low MCAS scores. Those need to be brought up. We have 70% of these children that are the highest in underperforming. We need to help these kids bring their scores up. That will help remove a piece of that level four off of us. We need stability in administration. That will help remove another piece off of us. There's a multiple reasons we're level four it's not just the kids it's not teachers it's not admin it's not school committee it's a multiple things that we need to fix and we need to start focusing on one thing and go after it and keep going after each issue okay, thank you all right that completes round one we'll go to round two And now we're back to the original lineup. The first primary responder will be Dr. Page. How would you characterize the school committee's interaction with organized labor? School committee's interaction with organized labor. Um, I, I think in, in general, um, it's, it's been relatively productive. Um, to be honest with you, that's not something that I've really followed in uh, that much uh, detail lately. Um, but I, I think as a, uh, an attribute, that's one of the most, you know, one of the most important things that the school committee uh, basically does is, is negotiations and, and it has authority over the budget. And those negotiations with all of the aspects of organized labor, whether it's the teachers, maintenance, and so forth, um, are all um, going to be uh, impacting the, the, the budget. And so the job of the school committee is to basically balance what the needs are of those, of those groups with the educational re needs of the, of the students and the resources that are available to the town, or from, from the town and the state. So. So. Thank you. Mr. Abramson? Well, I'll try to get that in, but I'm going to finish what I started before. Mr. Lazo's memory uh, uh, of history is creative, to say the least. He was not talking about high-level learners. It was a discussion in reference to the express lunch line. And the, he said, why must we always cater to the lower end? Because they got rid of this high-level uh, lunch line, this express lunch line. It had nothing to do with the cognitive development of the student. It had to do with their social status. 
In terms of the labor, I have 15 seconds to talk about that. So I'll see if I can get to that later. Thank you. Mr. Lazo, would you, you like to question? The, I know I remember the question. It's, it, it, this is a prime point of distraction. This is what, what happens in politics. There's a lot of distractions so you don't get to the issues. The issue of labor. The school committee's job is to, to organize labor is to negotiate the contracts. I have a tremendous amount of experience, more experience than, than probably most in that field successfully, watching out for the taxpayers and still getting a balance with a fair raise in salary for employees. Uh, as far as judging the school committee, I can't do that. I'm not in the boardroom. I will not pass judgment on that portion. As far as how administration treats labor, that's a discussion for another day. But I think the school committee, you know, they negotiate the contracts, and uh, we've been consistent in the past, and I just hope that they're holding the same consistent line, treating all units and unions the same, not moving one over the other. But I cannot pass judgment. I don't know their uh, actions with the labor. Thank you. Before we go on, just as a point from the moderator's perspective, the, in my judgment, the town committees have gone to great lengths to formulate some very thoughtful questions that they think the voters want answers to, and I think it's important that the candidates focus on that. And we, yeah. So we, the, the benefit falls to the people who are going to be voting on the 24th. So with that, uh, the follow-up, I'll read the question again. How would you characterize the school committee's interaction with organized labor? And uh, Ms. Pate. As the gentleman to my left said, they're responsible for negotiating contracts, and that's all done in executive session. So as a member of public, I couldn't tell you. But I can tell you that the school district is working on improving the organized labor. I listened to the superintendent state that they gave teachers increases. They're hiring teachers at a better wage to keep these teachers in. They're working with the paras in setting levels, jo clear job descriptions for these people so they know what their jobs are, what the expectations are. So the administration is working on that. I don't believe that's the school committee's job. That's the administrator's job. School committee's job is to negotiate the salaries. So if I get elected and I get in there, I'll tell you. But right now, I can tell you what the administration's doing, and I see good things. Thank you. Mr. Olivo. Would you please repeat the question? Yes. How would you characterize the school committee's interaction with organized labor? It's a good question. Uh, a lot of long hours. Um, there's been a lot of work put into, um, into the negotiation of contracts. Um, a lot of stuff does go on in executive session, but is also done in uh, open meetings or uh, posted meetings. It's not an easy job. We have done very well in negotiating the contracts with teachers, giving the teachers raises um, that will equal that of the state average um, to give them reason to stay. Uh, I think that if everybody knew the hours that are put in to making sure that that these contracts are negotiated properly, they would have a different perspective of what we do. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to question number two. The primary responder for question number two will be Mr. Abrahamson. This is a rather lengthy one, so if you want me to clear up. Uh, Read it further for clarification, I will. Discuss our middle and high school. Particularly, consider the hope that the new facility would be the catalyst for a widespread restoration to excellence throughout our school system. Do you think that has happened to an extent? Why or why not? One more time on that, please. Sure. Discuss our new middle high school. Particularly, consider the hope that the new facility would be the catalyst for a widespread restoration to excellence throughout our school system. Do you think that has happened to any extent? Why or why not? It's in the process of happening. Yes. 
uh, we have a wonderful facility there. We just haven't used it correctly. However, <laughs> it is not the same old argument that we have to have one principal there, one principal there, this is a school, that's a school, everywhere is school, school. No, that's not, that's, that's an argument that uh, apparently if uh, some people are elected, uh, we'll come back to the school committee. That argument is over. We don't need to have that anymore. We, again, uh, I would say that the uh, people who were responsible for bringing the school there, their enthusiasm is laudable. It is a very nice school. The outside is one thing. What goes on inside is another. And we have had some very difficult times there, but mostly it's from the interference from the outside. I think we're on the right track. Southbridge, the Southbridge school system can be, if it's inclusive, one of the best school systems around. And I realize people are going to say, you, you've got to be kidding. No. We have a diverse population, which is rich. That's a wonderful thing, you know, if people get along. But we do pay short shrift to some members of our, our uh, school uh, population. We need to get everyone equally at the, at the table. Then we will, I, I know that Southbridge can, Southbridge can have an excellent school system that will be the envy of other towns. Thank you. Mr. As Lundin. far as brick and mortar, as chairman of the school building committee for 10 years, I think that the community did a fine job on constructing the middle high school. It was a new concept to the state. It was almost an experimental thing where we're going to have it, and the way we explained it in the management team, it was all set. I don't think we're going in the right direction at this point. 30 days before we turned key on that, we blew that building up by getting rid of two experienced administrators that actually designed the building. The discipline has been fragmented by disciplinarians split up between grades instead of the consistent disciplinarian for three years, then four years. The middle school is a different animal. When you talk about team teaching, when you talk about a middle school, it is not the same as the high school. The enthusiasm that we were sharing when we were walking into that building in the early days is now gone. We have to rebuild the management team. Don't set this new principal up to fail. Thank you. Would you like to question again? Please. Okay. <laughs> Discuss our new middle and high school. Particularly consider the hope that the new facility would be the catalyst for a widespread restoration to excellence throughout our school system. Do you think that has happened to any extent? Why or why not? The new high school is absolutely beautiful. I've been up there on tour while kids are in class. Um, but it is not the end-all, be-all of our issues in our district. A new building can't write underperformance. It, it can just give us a place to put the underperformance. We, we need a strong administration team up there that are highly focused on the children. We need teachers that are going to focus in on these kids and help them. And it's the district's job to give each school building, not just the high school, middle high school, each building what they need to succeed in helping all the children. Thank you. Mr. Olivo? You're going to have to repeat the question one more time, please. Yes, <laughs> Discuss our middle high school. Particularly consider the hope that the new facility would be the catalyst for a widespread restoration to excellence throughout the school system. Do you think that has happened to any extent? Why or why not? Southbridge Middle High School is a beautiful school. And hats off to those who sat on the building committee for this school. I think that it can be a pillar of excellence. What has, is it currently happening? Not 100%. 
I think that the moment we can discuss with teachers openly, the faculty and the staff, what is expected of them in teaching our children and being able to express what we, being able to understand what they need from us as a school committee to be able to move forward and teach these kids properly. I think that if we have that open communication, we will be able to be successful and be able to have that pillar of excellence in the school district. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Page. Okay. Yeah, so I think, I think the simple answer to whether or not the, the middle high school um, was a catalyst for uh, re restoration of excellence is no, it wasn't. Um, and I think it's a perfect example that you don't solve problems by throwing money at them. Um, yes, it is a beautiful facility. It's state of the art. It has everything that anybody would need to deliver a high quality education. The problem was it was just bad management decisions in terms of how the facility was opened, how it was operated and run over the last couple of years. I'm really hopeful that we can re just redirect that. We have the right, get a right administrative team in place, the right superintendent to appoint the right administrators and, uh, and solve the problems inside the classroom. And in particular, again, addressing it to what goes into the middle high school. You have, you have to have a, a the, we have to start with the elementaries in terms of our educational deficits. And then that will enable us to have a, a true center for excellence that we can be proud of with the, with the middle high school at the final end. Thank you. Thank you. Well, these are all the questions that we have time for, for this evening. So we will begin now with the closing sta statements of the candidates, and we will do it in the same order that we did the opening statements, starting with Dr. Page and then working around the podium. Uh, my closing statements are, are, are very simple. I would like to uh, thank the local or the town uh, political committee committees for hosting this event. Um, I'd just like to let you to know that if I'm elected, I'm going to be a dedicated servant to the, servant to the community. And I'll always make decisions uh, based on what I believe is in the best interest of our students um, and the educational process. Um, I'm going to work to support the administration uh, in enabling them to the extent the school, school committee can to delivering a quality education uh, for our students. Um, at the same time, you know, we, we will uh, have on occasion probably have to hold administration accountable, um, but I won't take the approach that this is what you need to do. Uh, you need to do this, you need to do that, or whatever. I'm going to take that. They, they know what they need to do. We need to improve the performance, okay? I'm going to take it from a different perspective. What do you need from us? What, what is in, inhibiting, what is in your way from enabling progress to be made at that? So we can better understand the problem and better use our resources and our insight, perhaps, and knowledge uh, to, try and, to try and solve the problems. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done. This is, this is endemic. It's ground in. We have a long, long history, as somebody said earlier, of many, many years of being underperforming as a district. Um, and I think we need to start at the, at the beginning of the educational process in, in <coughs> kindergarten and in, in first grade. What's going on there? What are our problems there? And we can't be propagating deficiencies, serious academic deficiencies, to the next grade, to the next grade. And then you get to a, a really a, a huge problem for these students in high school. Um, they're, they're basically entering ninth grade. That's when they're establishing their, their grade point average that enables them uh, to, to go on to college or not. And they're simply not prepared to be there. And so again, we're, we, we have this sort of pattern that we seem to be setting people up to fail. We're putting people in positions to, to, to do something and they're not prepared to do it. And I think we've done that in, in a certain case with administrators <coughs> over the last couple of years in terms of what responsibilities we've laid on principals. Um, and, and if you look at it, we're doing it with our students too. We're, we're saying, okay, well, you don't know your times tables up to 12 by 12 in third grade, but we're gonna put you in fourth grade anyway. We need to figure out how to, get, how to get them performing at grade level very, very early on. And I think if we do that, it'll be amazing the progress that you're going to see. And, um, and so that, that's the, that, those, are the, those are the issues that I feel very passionate about. I, I think um, all aspects of, the, uh, of education uh, are important. The experiences that kids have socially, academically, sports, and all of those kinds of things are, are incredibly and equally in, important in, in, uh, in cultivating well-rounded citizens that are going to contribute to society. And, and I'm here to, to propose my candidacy that I'm going to work to try and achieve that for the, for the students of Southbridge. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Dr. Page. Mr. Abrahamson. <clears throat> Once again, I thank all those who contributed to making this debate possible, and I thank the other candidates for their participation. Really. Citizens of Southbridge, the televised debate for school committee is over. And now it's time for you to take two important steps. First, you must sift through what you've heard and decide which candidates best reflect your views about the future of the Southbridge Public Schools. And then you must resolve to go to the polls on June 24th and make your voices heard through the ballot box. If I'm fortunate enough to be successful, I'll do my best. If I'm defeated, I'll congratulate the winners and bow out gracefully, leaving them to carry out the will of the people. Now, I want to speak directly to the teachers of Southbridge. Perhaps this will get to some of that answer that you wanted before. In my 31 years as a teacher, I've worked for many administrators. Some were great, and some were horrible. At times, in the worst of times, I felt that as teachers, we were at the bottom of this funnel. And lots of stuff was dumped in at the top, passing through one level after another until it spilled on, uh, out on us to do it or else. OK? There was no direction as to how to do it or talk of resources to enable us to do it. Let it be a challenge to you is no more a way to run a school system than it was in Bell Kaufman's up the down staircase. As teachers, you're on the front lines. When a school committee issues an order affecting your work, it must be accompanied by the training and resources necessary to do the job, and it must assure that administrators can clearly define the task for you and show you how it's done. Finally, if you find that the resources on hand are not adequate, that information must come back to the school committee where there is an obligation to assure you that you have what you need. And if it isn't available, you must not, you will not be held responsible for performing that task. Citizens of Southbridge, it does take the community banding together on behalf of the children of Southbridge to provide for them the best school system that we can. I'd like to take an active role in that as a member of the Southbridge School Committee, and I ask you for your vote on June 24th. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lazo? I would like to start out by saying I'd like to thank the people that are attending the debate tonight uh, to come out on a uh, night like tonight. Thank you very much for coming. I'd like to thank the Republican and the Democratic Town Committee. As I said earlier, it's always nice to see the Republicans and the Democrats getting along. And to the public, thank you for watching the debate. Um, tonight you saw five people that have sincere beliefs. Um, some of them are quite different, and that's why it makes Southbridge such a great community, our diversity. But make no mistakes. There's a big job ahead. There's a budget that you have to work with. You can't work with a budget with $350,000 of unemployment you're handing to the town and hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal bills and people leaving our district, our employees, uh, unfairly, and, and some just leaving because they don't want to be next on a totem pole. That has to stop. School choice stops only when we provide a good, solid education to a child. That's why people go somewhere else, because they don't like the product that we are working on right now. But I think that I would like to bring strength, leadership, and a ton of knowledge that you, the voters of Southbridge, have given me over the years as chairman of your council, chairman of your school committee, chairman of your building committee. There's a lot of knowledge over the years garnering the history and the mistakes that have been made, and God knows we've made some, and I've made some. But I think what we have to do is, is take that as knowledge. This is a school committee. It's about knowledge. Empower the kids with that knowledge, where when they do make a mistake, don't crucify them. Educate them and move them to the next step. Much like adults, we're still learning. I'm 56 years old, and I'm never going to stop learning, and I'm going to still make more mistakes. I'm not going to blow a lot of smoke and mirrors. The only thing I can guarantee you is a lot of strength at the debate. Not bullying. Strength. When you have a flawed debate and you're passionate about an issue, you do not roll over. There is a parliamentary procedure. There are different ways that you get your issue across the floor and try and garner your fellow school committee members to support it. 
But what's going on in the last two years in the Southridge school system, when you see somebody like Amy Allen leave the district to go to Northbridge, and then she was offered a job in Wachusett, assistant superintendencies, there's no place for Amy Allen in the Southridge school system. That is foolish. We're losing some great, great people. Some of them are local people. They own homes and they're taxpayers and they can't even work in their own town. This has to stop by creating a new standard, by creating a new atmosphere of optimism. As Ms. Burrito said, keep it positive. If you want positive and you want strength, vote for Scott Lazo. I'm asking you for your vote, election day, and I thank you very much for being patient with us tonight. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Ms. Pate? I'd like to thank both parties for setting this up for us tonight and my fellow candidates for not being brutal. Um, and I'd like to thank the audience. No matter the outcome of the election, what it holds for me, I will still stay involved in this school district, in this community. I live here. My son goes to school here. I have friends and their children. Um, I would love to be a part of the solution to move forward if the town feels that I could help. And, and I would be honored if I was voted in. And I will hold the school district, as well as myself, accountable to see that we do what we promised to, to help our children to help remove that level four standing that we have on us and, and better our school district and better our community. I believe every child deserves the best that we can give them and we need to stay focused on these children. We, we can't do the adult bickering. It, it's not going to help the kids at all. We as a community owe it to all our kids to give them the best that they can get so that they can succeed when they get out of school and they can succeed in their life without worrying, you know, that they're not educated to get a good job. Let's give them that education. Let's give them those opportunities and help them out. We owe it to these kids. There's several programs I would love to see that I believe could help these kids by helping their parents. I would love to see a community-based volunteer group where the community, not just parents, go into the schools and volunteer. Even if you don't have a child, go in and volunteer and help the kids. They'd appreciate it. They're great kids. We have great teachers that would love it also, the extra help. Um, I would also like to see an English as a second language course being provided to the adults in our community that don't speak English. How can these parents help their kids if, if they can't speak our language, that they can advocate properly for their kids? They can't. They do it through a, a translator, and sometimes it really does get lost in translation. We need to help our adults in the community. And I'd also like to see a feeding program that would provide free breakfast and lunch for our children. And there's a federal program out there that can do this for our community. We qualify with the number of low income that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Olivo. <coughs> I would like to first start off by thanking the Southbridge Town political parties for organizing this debate and uh, thanking my fellow candidates up here. Um, for expressing their interest in running for school committee. It is not an easy job, as some of them have sat on the committee before uh, may already know. I came to the town of Southbridge because of the diversity. I am grateful that we did, and I'm grateful for the school districts. I have seen the school district change from the time that I got here and wasn't change for the better. This is what motivated me to seek election or appointment in December. I don't believe that 
I'm finished. I believe that I still have great input and great uh, knowledge to be able to bring to the table. I believe that if we as a community express the interest in our schools and in our students, we will move forward. I believe that if we can be able to express to the teachers and the faculty what we expect of them and listen to what they expect of us as a school committee, then it will drastically improve the education of our children. I believe that the children of this town seek structure. And I believe that it is lacking at this time. I believe that we're moving in the right direction, and I want to be a part of that. I believe that not only education will move us forward, but I do believe that the different clubs and the athletic programs will assist in teaching these kids respect and teaching these kids responsibility. I believe that we need to demand more of these students. I believe that we need to create structure for these kids that will hold them accountable for their own actions and for their own education. Because as they graduate from this school, it is their education that they're going to seek. And when they're away at college, nobody's going to be holding their hands. So if we set them up now, I think they will be successful. And on June 24th, I hope that you vote for Chris Olivo. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of both committees, I want to thank the candidates for their fine, lively debate this evening. I want to say thank you to the Cable Axis, Southbridge Cable Axis, for putting this together and organizing it so diligently, and our audience here and also joining us from home. Please don't go away. We'll be back after a short break as we set up and bring you the debates for the Town Council. Thank you.